70,000. He had to employ extra help to sort them out and finally reach the conclusion as to which lady would befit the, all the conditions and uh, circumstances in which she, had to, which she would have to cope. And the choice with the grace of Allah was so beautiful that that lady is still living as a Muslim. And uh, she has given birth and raised the children to be excellent Muslims. What of those who did not read that advertisement or those who read but could not find a husband through that advertisement? Were they not free to create disorder in the society? Not only in the lives of unmarried people but also in the lives of married people in the lives of married women, those who had to cope with the daily free relationship of their husbands with other girls and they could not stop that, would that not create a hell for the whole society? If it does, why do you emphasize on those small areas of fire which you relate to the Islamic injunction? which are found like small islands here and there, which are not a routine of the society. The incidence of marriage more than once in Islam is so few and far between that even in this society of thousands of Ahmadis here in the UK, I doubt if there will be anyone whom you could pinpoint as having married twice except for some from African societies, I know, they are married twice or some other countries, but uh, in situations like one wife had died and he, they may have to marry again, or in a situation where it was a custom in Africa even now to marry a hundred times if possible you could. So Islamic injunction must be studied in the background of its uh, history, what necessitated it, and its potential applicability to the grave human situations. And I hope this answer will satisfy you to a degree, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Yasser. Good morning. Please excuse my uh, pronunciation or my familiarity, but this is my first time in a mosque. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. I have two questions. In fact, uh, I have to seek pardon for my pronunciation, not you, for yours. Your pronunciation <laughs> is perfect, sir. Thank you. If my English, if my Indian or Hindu or Urdu was half as good as your English. Thank you so much. Very kind of well, well, you. Yes. Um, I have studied much theology in uh, nearly 50 years. Buddhism, uh, the Bhakti Vedanti Swami, uh, the Mahayana school, the Himayana school, Catholicism, uh, Protestantism, Evangelism, Baptism, Anglicanisms, and all these different isms. In, in that regard, we have taken after each other. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, that I have been my, my hobby too. Yes. I'm still studying. It is only recently that I have come and been introduced to Islam. Thank you. But all the religions tell me, here is God, there is God, this is the way, you must do this, you must do that. I do believe that God is not confined to man's philosophy, that God is above. However, I want to know God. There is something within me that desires to know God. I run away from God, but... He always brings me back. Quite, quite. The world is not... <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I? Can you tell me where I might find yes, God? I, I'll do that. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Your question is, first of all, very moving. Because it's not just a case of a single person here. This is a case which applies to hundreds of thousands, even millions of people in this world today, mm. 
were considered either agnostics or atheists, but deep in their hearts, something agitates them. And they want to know their God. In uh, English literature, we find Shelley being mentioned as one who went to the caves and shouted at the top of his voice, Oh God, I want you, come and get me if you, if you are, and so on and so forth. But no answer. Then we hear of the astronauts in USSR. When the first time they went into space, they are reported to have, been, have shouted at the top of their voices, Oh God, we hear that you are there somewhere. We don't find you anywhere. We have come that high. If you are there, answer us. But this is not only a recent trend of history in man's quest for God, or the so-called quest for God. We hear the Pharaoh doing the same. He asked Haman to build a very tall, majestic building, whereby he could reach the recesses of the heavens and see for himself if what Moses is telling him is truth or just in, it's an imagination of, fic, of, of his uh, own wishful thinking or a fiction or a piece of rubbish. And that is not the words he used, but that was the essence of what he said. And then he declared, no, I haven't found any answer. Yet we know from the history of each prophet that they all did the same, but not with that arrogance and pride with total humility and submission mm -hmm. and they always invariably found the answer. So just the quest is not essential. What is important is what is motivating, what is motivating the quest within your heart. And to, if you are honestly and deeply interested in finding your Creator, the answer we find in the Holy Quran is that invariably you will be led to him, without fail. Mm. Now another thing which your question reminded me, because I consider this question to be a very profound question based deeply in human psyche, is the verse of the Holy Quran that even before the creation of the universe, God directly addressed human nature, as if it, it existed, but it did not. The Holy Quran is very clear about it. It is a sort of uh, a dialogue in blueprint. Well, Allah says, when I decided to create man, creation it was obvious it was not yet created. I inquired from him, am I not your Lord, the Creator? And they all answered, yes, yes, why not? Now this is, this seems to be a, a mythical claim which has no reality, no foundation. But it has foundation in every nature, even in the nature of atheists to find evidence of this. And uh, to remind you of uh, the verdict of a philosopher, is it Kant or Kant? Mm. Pronunciation. Kant. 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 Yes. Kant. 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 That's right. Kant was a non-believer. We know that. And he studied many an argument presented by the Christian world. He knew in favor of God. That is the logical and philosophical, philosophical argument. And he rejected all arguments with his own counter uh, logic. But when he came to this argument which is mentioned in the Holy Quran, he was stuck and he had to admit defeat. He said, only there is one argument which keeps agitating my mind and I find no answer, find no answer to that. He said, why on earth should we find the quest for God all over the world? without fail, belonging to all ages of human experience. He said, this is what keeps bothering me and if the